Welcome to Capriva Angus. I'm Jim Capriva, this is Karen Capriva, Angela Capriva, and Lee Capriva. We're the recipients of the 2012 Leopold Award. Very honored to receive that recognition, and we'd like to take you on a little tour of the place. Jim and I have been married for 30 years, and I'm the fifth generation. We're really lucky to be the fourth and fifth generation to be living here. Coming home to a family operation is, is really a challenge in today's agriculture world. Uh, having an operation that is big enough to provide several families income. And so one of the, one of the most difficult things is, is is finding more land to expand or to expand from within the operation. The land has to, has to be taken care of to be given on to future generations. We're constantly looking for methods that we can utilize our, our resources wisely, more wisely, and, uh, and optimize what that resource can give us. It's very humbling to know that um, our work is, is being uh, looked at as one of the the, the best and something to pattern other operations after. Lake Creek Refuge pulled in Alan Savory to talk about rotational grazing. Well, Alan's, Alan Savory didn't show up, but his team did, and taught a, a one-day course on rotational grazing. And the theory of that was the United States is overgrazed but understocked, that we could graze more cattle and improve our grassland and instead of less cattle and abuse our grassland. They started them in the brome grass because it came on first. When the brome grass was all used up, they opened the gate, let them into the next chunk. And when that was all used up, they opened the gate and let them into the next chunk. Uh, really, all we've done in that rotation is we closed the gates behind them. We start them on the brome grass, we let them into the next chunk, we close the gate behind them. So the brome grass gets a chance to recover. When that next chunk is utilized fairly well, we let them into the next one, close the gate behind them. So we're always resting uh, and keeping them off. So the regrowth uh, gets a chance to build the root reserves. Uh, we appreciate the wildlife and we try and protect it. The main problem around here is habitat. It, it's all farmed up. Fences are removed, trees are bulldozed down, and there literally is no place for the wildlife. And with the grazing, uh, as opposed to crop production, the grazing land is still suitable for habitat for wildlife. Uh, the grazing cattle will walk right around a pheasant nest. With the rotational grazing, the cattle are in there for a relatively short time, and then they're moved on. So the, the conflict, the moment of, of uh, conflict is fairly short. No tilling is a far superior method for uh, dryland farming. Uh, the problem with uh, conventional tillage is it exposes the soil to wind and water erosion. Uh, also, the, the no tilling preserves moisture so that that crop those seeds actually get to moisture and actually have some moisture to start with. You still need rain, but every time you stir the dirt up, uh, more moisture is lost. And so it's counterproductive to stir it up and dry it out real good before you put the seed in. Uh, that's something you, you can't buy is that moisture. I'm here to tell you that it's doable. Uh, the information's out there. If you're interested and you'd like to learn, 
There's people that are very willing to teach you and oftentimes help cover the expense that you're going to run into. You got to do what you think is right and, and if people see that it's working, maybe they'll try it. The most impressive thing I think on, on Capriva's ranch is how they've designed some of their, their pasture systems and they've talked a lot about rotational grazing. Uh, and I've had the opportunity to be out on their, on their land uh, looking at the different cross fences and water developments and those types of things that they have implemented and they've really worked well for them. The strength of a country is based on its, on its food source. I just got back from a South Dakota ag rural ship, uh, foreign travel experience where we went to China and Vietnam and when you see how fragile uh, their food source is it makes you really appreciate our food source. Uh, they're, they count heavily on imports to feed their people. The moment the imports uh, would break down any political or, or worldwide shortage of food their people would be out of food within days, maybe the same day. Uh, we look at, at it as a strength. We're the food basket of the world and, and farmers are the true conservationists. We have the job of feeding not only our people but uh, the whole world.